you man Diamond K in here, of course, RadioFire.com, the Diamond K Show.com, and we are a listener-supported internet talk radio and podcast network streaming from our production facilities in Baltimore and Atlanta. And as this election season comes almost to the end, we have a lot of decisions to make here. As far as Baltimore, who is going to be the next mayor of this city? It's a tough job. And we have some finalists, <laughs> finalists who wants to do it. Uh, there are four candidates who are on the ballot, but, uh, you know, one of the candidates doesn't have any chance of uh, of victory, and that's the uh, gentleman from the worker, the Workers' Party, right? Uh, so the, the three that are in any position to win, uh, let me say them in order. Shannon Wright, the Republican, Bob Wallace, the Independent, and Brandon Scott, uh, the Democrat. And uh, so we're just eight days away from Election Day. And it is a big race. These top three candidates that I named have been uh, in, in various debates and forums and um, and quagmires, uh, obviously the independent uh, Bob Wallace got in the race kind of late, and Shannon Wright, the Republican, has you know she's been in it for a minute. I was surprised that she has uh, made it thus far. Brandon Scott is favored to win. Uh, there have been some debates that have taken place, and for the most part, Brandon Scott has not participated in these debates. And you may ask yourself why, like, why is he not participating in the debate? And I understood why he didn't. Uh, I mean, based on polling, he's heavily favored to win this. So, so what does he have to gain? This, this might be his philosophy. What does Brandon Scott have to gain by participating in a debate with two candidates who are so far behind him in polls. And, and then I know some people are going to say, wait, you know, polls, what about last time with, you know, uh, uh, Trump and uh, polls? Can you, can you trust polls? Um, and I say that you can trust polls in certain instances. The probability of Baltimore electing uh, Shannon Wright or Bob Wallace, for that matter, is um, <laughs> highly unlikely, okay? Uh, Dave Harding is the other candidate. We're just days before, right? So usually in debates, things don't change. Like, nothing in a debate usually changes the mind of the, uh, the voter, usually. City Council President Brandon Scott is the Democratic nominee. And as I said, he is a heavy favorite to win. Here in Baltimore. So the only strategy that Republicans or independents can use is the uh, strategy of oh, you tried it that way. Why don't you why don't you try something different? Elect me, um, elect him. Uh, and so uh, that's the strategy that, that they have been using. Uh, but this election is not just about who wants to be the next mayor. Uh, it's not just that. Uh, but for Baltimore candidates, that is their focus. But, of course, you know, you have a president on the ballot as well. So anyway, uh, the candidates are very different. Bob Wallace, the independent, is a businessman, uh, accomplished businessman, and we've had a chance to talk with him. He's been on the program before, and I think that he has some great ideas. And Shannon Wright is the Republican, and uh, she was last seen, maybe not last seen, but uh, uh, I saw her praying for the president outside of the hospital when he was there with COVID. It's weird. Uh, but she is a reverend, so, uh, you know, that's, that is, uh, is, is something that 
is to be expected. Uh, I saw an interesting forum. They didn't use the word debate, but a forum that took place uh, was hosted by the Baltimore NAACP and the Afro newspaper. Uh, so during that uh, forum, debate, whatever you want to call it, Shannon Wright was present. Uh, working class party candidate David Harding was present, present uh, as well as Bob Wallace and Brandon Scott. Um, as of this broadcast, more than 70,000 people in Baltimore have already returned their mail-in ballots. And of the ballots already received, roughly 88% are from registered Democrats in the city. This is according to uh, State Board of Elections. So, But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that the Independent and the Republican uh, did not, you know, siphon off some of those votes. Brandon Scott has mostly been campaigning uh, from City Hall, pushing legislation, uh, and the critiques of Brandon Scott from his uh, opponents, uh, Bob Wallace, the businessman uh, who has put together a a very well-funded campaign. He's running TV ads, he's running digital ads, and a uh, a walking campaign across the city that he says takes takes him to all of the zip codes throughout the city. Now, uh, Shannon Wright has had less money to run her campaign, and uh, uh, Harding uh, said during the debate that uh, he doesn't expect to be elected mayor. So just, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he could have found something else to do, uh, but he he was very proud of the fact that he got all these signatures uh, to get himself on the ballot. But then when it came down to it, it's just like he just stopped with the work. Most people didn't even didn't even know about him or was not even aware of him. And he had a couple of good ideas, like two, uh, as it relates to uh, uh, the form that took place, like I said, with the uh, Afro and the NAACP, which was hosted by Joshua Harris. Um, and uh, he did a good job keeping it all together. There was a lot. Uh, Shannon Wright had issues with her mute button. I'm t Every single time, it's a virtual debate, the forum. So every time they went to her, she was on mute. And so she's talking for, you know, five seconds. I mean, and it, it, it's on mute. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it was a little bit um, distracting. Um, we're going to talk about you being the mayor and you being able to run this city in a digital age, and you can't even work the mute button during a Zoom call. <laughs> but uh, Brandon Scott was poised during uh, that forum, and I think that he had he carried himself like he was the mayor. Like I said, the critique that has been uh, thrown at Brandon Scott is that he's been around for you know, 10 years and you should have done this. You should have done that. And it reminds me of a critique that Republicans frequently throw at Joe Biden. You've been in government 40 some year, 47 years. You know, why haven't you done this or haven't, haven't you done that? And the answer is the same for both candidates, whether we're talking about Joe Biden. Uh, and as you hear uh, opponents say that he's been in, uh, you know, Congress for 40 some years and why didn't he do this and why didn't he do that? And Brandon Scott, who's been a part of several uh, administrations, two administrations, but he, you know, uh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Or why is crime like this and trying to throw this at their feet? And the answer is simple. There's a big difference between being in Joe Biden's case, one of the Congress members from Delaware, one of two from Delaware, and then you're in a body of a you know hundred some people, and being the president. And there's a difference between being a member of someone's administration and being the mayor. So I think that Brandon Scott is best positioned from the candidates that we have to lead the city. He has been around several administrations. 
And he's definitely seen what not to do. He's definitely seen what not to do. There was also a debate that was hosted by uh, WBAL and uh, Jason Newton from WBAL had that under control, I think. The top three candidates, as I said, Brandon Scott, Shannon Wright, and Bob Wallace all participated. Uh, There were several questions asked of them. Questions uh, like, uh, you know, first priorities in office. In, in office. Uh, from there, they moved on to uh, stopping what they call urban flight of businesses and residents. Uh, they talked about that. And of course, crime is a major priority. Recently, former police commissioner Anthony Batts testified that pushback between the police union in Baltimore, and the police commissioner have helped drive a divide in law enforcement. So, of course, they were talking about how to improve the relationship between the Baltimore Police Department and the police union and to reduce crime. Uh, Typical questions that that you get. Uh, And I thought that all in all, uh, when it comes down to it, Brandon Scott is best positioned to lead the city. He is. Uh, He has the experience. And uh, I just, as it relates to Shannon Wright, I think that um, I'm surprised that she, that she's in this position. Uh, And the future of Baltimore, leaving that in the hands of someone who is just not from here and has not been here that long has always rubbed me the wrong way. So that cancels her out. Not, not, that's not the only reason, uh, but uh, that's one of the things that has always struck me. I think that she means well, uh, but a lot of her Republican policies will not work in this city, will not work in this city. Uh, I think that one of the worst things that we can do is um, elect Shannon Wright as mayor of Baltimore. And I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but I, I'm just going to be honest here. And I've, I've spoken with her on on uh, two or three occasions on the program. She's been here. and we, We've talked. Uh, she's a nice lady. Uh, but we're talking about the future of Baltimore. And I just don't think that she is cut out to do it. Bob Wallace, business person. Uh, but when we talk about these debates and we talk about Bob Wallace, who is an, an accomplished businessman, But Brandon Scott was facing two Republicans. I mean, I know that that Bob Wallace has an eye by his name, says he's independent. I get it. He's been an independent for 15 minutes, people. He is really a Republican. So we have to understand the strategies that are going to come down. And people, usually Republicans, will talk about uh, don't pay attention uh, to the letter beside my name. Ooh, don't pay attention to that. Uh, listen to what I'm saying, right? Uh, let's understand that Republicans are trying to take people's health care during a pandemic. So when you have these uh, wolves in sheep clothing coming to you, say, oh, don't pay attention to the fact that, 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 that there's a letter beside my name of someone who's trying to take your health care someone who doesn't want to give relief. These are the policies that these people believe. And whether you're talking about Shannon Wright, whether you're talking about Bob Wallace, who has only been removed from those policies for 15 minutes, understand the real person that you're electing. So Brandon Scott had to debate two Republicans One say, ooh, don't pay attention. And anytime they bring up Trump, which is is funny, Shannon Wright says, oh, you're you're obsessed with the president. You're obsessed with talking about Donald Trump. You were at the hospital, Walter Reed and Bethesda, praying for the president, you know, during his stint in coronavirus, leading the prayer outside the the candlelight vigil. You know what I mean? How fans do with with, uh, one of their entertainers is in the hospital and they'll be outside, you know, with their posters and stuff. She was doing that. Right. 
you you talk about people obsessed with Trump. You're obsessed with Trump, Shannon, right? Here's a picture of her uh, with Mike Pence floating around the internet. She's smiling like she was, you know, in a picture with Beyonce or something. And there's pictures of Bob Wallace, you know, coddling with Governor Hogan. Now, aside from this pandemic, Governor Hogan has not been a friend to Baltimore City. Don't get it twisted. And him and Bob Wallace are like this, right? We cannot be fooled by these people, okay? Now, for any critique that I've ever had of Brandon Scott, he has the city's best interest in heart. He's been on the inside and seen what not to do, and he has ideas of what to do going forward. That's the best choice, folks. Uh, but as I said, there was this there was this debate with um, WBAL TV hosted by uh, Jason Newton, and I want to play a little bit of the closing statements from the three of these candidates. This is the closing statements from this debate that was uh, as courtesy of WBAL TV. If we can roll that, we as a city, we're on the Titanic. We've had these warnings that has been sent to us. We've had, in the last four mayors of our city, we've had two that have been convicted of crimes, right? So, so we, 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 we're we getting smaller in size. We're, we're more violent. We are, our, school, our kids are not being educated. People feel unsafe. Businesses are leaving. And I asked the citizens of Baltimore, why would you promote someone who's been part of that decay of our city over the last 10, 11 years, my opponent, why would you promote them? when they're not performed that way. So would you would you turn over a $3.5 billion corporation to someone who has no experience in running a corporation? And so I suggest to you that the city of Baltimore needs to make the right decision. I think I'm that decision, Jason. I believe I have the experience as, a, a, as an executive, as an engineer, as a job creator, as a father of five kids and eight grandkids. I have traveled the world, met with kings and queens and leaders of nations. And I'm bringing all that back to Baltimore City to say, hey, Baltimore, we can take what we have, our assets, the new leadership and a new plan, and we can become Baltimore 2.0. But I need your help to do that. And I'm asking for your vote. All right. So that that was Bob Wallace, independent. Uh, let's listen to Shannon Wright. Baltimore City is heading for its sixth straight year of 300 plus homicides. There are 24 poor performing schools in the state of Maryland. Half of them are right here in our city. Our population is declining, our crime rates are going up, and the quality of life is also declining. To vote in your own best interest means to vote for right for mayor, and I will tell you why. Brandon Scott is a continuation of the failed policies. And Bob Wallace, although he has a wealth of business experience, does not have the government experience, the policy experience necessary. I am a former business owner, as well as I've written legislative policy on the state, local, and federal level. And to make Baltimore do what it needs to do, you need to be able to understand both of those worlds and marry them together successfully. We are not in a place where we have four more years to play around and wait to see if we get it right. This election cycle is critical. We were heading in the wrong direction before COVID, and COVID has really sped up that process. A new face in Brandon with the same policies, this city can't survive that. And, and Bob has a great expertise in balance uh, in business, but not in government. And we need the two together to be able to move this city forward so that we can ensure that the best and brightest days for Baltimore are still yet ahead. This is the most important election in Baltimore's history. And it's time for Baltimore to uh, break with the horrid relationships of the past, uh, break and allow a new generation of leaders to lead it. I am a son of Baltimore, born and raised here, never left, never lived anywhere else. It's different for me. When you've seen your shooting before your 10th, first, your 10th birthday, your first shooting before your 10th birthday, when you went to school, you know heat and air. When you dedicated to your life to service, you know how great Baltimore can be. I know city government inside and out. I've been fighting uh, to change city government, demanding plans for violent crime. That's my frustration is what led me, led me to run for mayor because I'm tired of waiting for someone else. It's time for my generation to take control 
of this city, put it on the best path for us to be the best Baltimore we can be moving forward. Uh, my ask to the citizens of Baltimore is trust in someone who's been here, trust in someone who was out in the streets leading the 300 men march movement before anyone was talking about the violent crime issue in Baltimore. Trust in someone who has been in neighborhoods day in and day out and who has been proven that they can lead this city and give me the chance to show that the new generation will take Baltimore to its highest heights. All right, so that was uh, uh, the candidates. Uh, that was their pitches. That was uh, uh, that. That was that was it. That's that's essentially uh, what you have to make your selection from. They ran it down. That's how they feel. That's who they are. And I think that in many instances, let's talk about Shannon Wright first. Many instances, her critiques of Bob Wallace apply to herself as well. When she talks about the experience in government, she doesn't have that. When you talk about the experience in business, she doesn't have that either. And you see America, Baltimore, you see what has happened when we put someone in office that has a bunch of business experience but no, no government experience. That's, that's what the president is. Bunch of business experience, entertainment experience. And you know I love entertainment. I got my start in, as an entertainer. But uh, as it relates to the mayor, I say it again, we are best positioned and and we'll be in the best situation uh, with Brandon Scott. Uh, People say the same, this, the same, that. Uh, This gentleman is not going to do the same strategies that we have seen from past mayors. He's not going to do that. That's that's one thing that, that I can really say he's not going to do the same old same old uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section of course instagram facebook twitter linkedin tiktok at the Don k show at radio on fire and what we're going to do now we're going to take a quick break and then when we come back i want to talk about i mean there's some bad things going on and a fire being set in a boston uh, Dropbox. I want to talk about that. The FBI is investigating this. Let's take a quick break and come back with more of the program after this. <laughs> 